In this video, I'm gonna show you a really easy way to make a schedule for your exams that will help you stay organized and on track. Hey there, my name is Mike, and if you're like most students, you're probably struggling with making a study schedule for your final exams, but don't worry, in this video, I'm gonna show you an easy way to do it that will help you stay on track and organized. And yes, this works for both high school and college students. Now, most students have to do more than one thing at a time during final exams. It sucks, but it's true. Being able to multitask while studying is crucial. So it is important to have a plan that will help you do more than one thing at a time. Now, before we get into it, there are three questions that you need to ask yourself. First, how many subjects slash topics do you have? Which of them is important and which is not? This will depend on the influence to your total score and how familiar you are with each of them. Third is how much time do you have? So let's talk about creating an exam schedule correctly. The four quadrants of this matrix are key in understanding how to separate topics into different zones and develop targeted strategies. Topics that fall under the same heading can be divided up accordingly, making it easier so that you can decide what needs more focus or attention. Let me show you how to deal with the subjects on the four quadrants. For this and other templates, you will see that I'm using eDrawMind. The first quadrant is familiar and important. Make sure you don't fail on these things because this is your guarantee to an A. Put in more effort. For me, I have geography. The second quadrant is familiar, but not important. Spend 20 minutes on the way home while you're traveling to review what you have done and learned. This will help you get a few extra marks with minimal effort. For myself, I've put French. The third quadrant is not familiar and not important. This is where you only put effort if you have extra time. For myself, I got science here. And the fourth quadrant is not familiar, but important. You should put most of your time on this part. If you are unsure where to start, create a new matrix specifically for this section. Again, for myself, I've got math and chemistry here. Now there are two ways to create a study schedule template. The key to success on the final exam is planning. You should make a schedule and be as organized in your studying so that you can get great marks. There are two ways that you can make this schedule. The first is making a schedule based on dates and times. This is great if you have a specific time frame in mind, like this Saturday at 8 a.m. I'm gonna start, but you need to know yourself and how confident you are in this schedule. The second is based on topics called the retrospective revision timetable. This can help you focus your studying by deciding what areas of interest or expertise you have and then creating spaced repetition sessions around these specific interests so that they are best suited for your learning. Now let's do some pros and cons of each schedule, starting with the date-based studying. So the pros that we have is that first, you don't have to waste time planning. If you follow a date-based study schedule, you don't have to waste any of your time planning out the studies. You can simply look at your schedule and know exactly what you need to do and when you need to do it. This can save you a lot of time and hassle in the long run. Second is that you'll make better use of your time. Since you know exactly what you need to do and when you need to do it, you can avoid wasting time on activities that aren't relevant to your studies and you can focus your efforts on the tasks that are most important. This can help you get more out of your study sessions and improve your overall productivity. Now the cons of a date-based study schedule is first, you might fall behind. If you're the type of person who likes to stay ahead of the game, a date-based study schedule might not be for you. With a date-based study schedule, you're only working on material that will be covered in the upcoming class. This means that if you miss a day or even a week of studying, you'll likely fall behind. The second con for a date-based study schedule is you might get overwhelmed. That's another downside of this schedule is overwhelm. If you have a lot of material to cover in a short period of time, it can be tough to stay on top of everything. This can lead to feeling stressed and anxious, which can actually hinder your ability to learn. Now let's talk about the topic-based studying schedule. One of the primary benefits of spaced repetition sessions is that they can help you learn information more quickly. 
When you space out your learning, you're giving your brain time to process and store the information more effectively. This means that when you review your material, you'll be able to recall it more easily and accurately. The second pro of this method is that they can help you retain information for longer periods of time. When you space out your learning, you're more likely to review the material multiple times, which helps solidify the information in your memory. Additionally, spaced repetition sessions can help you prevent forgetting as they provide regular reminders of the material you've already learned. Now let's talk about the cons. One of the primary drawbacks of spaced repetition sessions is that they can be quite time consuming. In order to effectively learn new information, you need to space out the repetitions, which means that each session will take longer than if you were cramming the material in. Additionally, if you forget to review a certain piece of information for a while, it will take longer to relearn it when you do finally get around to reviewing it. The second con is that it will require a great deal of discipline. If you only review the material sporadically, you will likely forget most of it and you will have to start from scratch next time you wanna learn it. So let's talk some specific tips that will make you more efficient. To be a more effective learner, you need to give yourself feedback. Every day for at least five to 10 minutes, reflect on the things that went well in your studying and areas that you need improvement. This could make a huge difference in your effectiveness of nailing the exam. Use highlights, custom shapes, colors, etc. if you're using the eDraw scheduling. Second is that eDraw Mind is the perfect study tool for organizing all of your materials. It allows you to combine different types of data in one map and then build as many mind maps on different topics as you require. And third, it's easy to get distracted when you have a lot of deadlines and projects. But using the eDraw Mind, it helps you keep your attention on the key points. You can customize it with different colors, shapes, for quick reminders that will stay in one place until they're needed again. I would love for you to comment below if you have other tips that help you maximize your study time. If we all contribute, we'll all start learning just a little bit better and a little bit quicker and a little bit more efficiently. Now with eDraw Mind, our study app, it's really easy to make a schedule for your exams and to productively learn your material. But if you have a hard time being productive in general, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video where I share five must-know tips to be more productive. I'll see you there. Ciao.